Steve Berman, baseball writer, editor for The Athletic in the Bay Area, joins us now on the program. Steve, how did we get to this point with the Oakland A's, with nobody showing up, and now we're headed to Vegas? Well, the nobody showing up part uh, and Vegas are intertwined. So the team was systematically dismantled after the 21 season, where they were actually in first place until about mid-August. And then, you know, they made some moves to the deadline. Team seemed like it was going to contend for the AL West title, fell flat. Afterwards, they pretty much told everyone, hey, we're going to dismantle this team. It's time for a rebuild. So the fans are ready for another rebuild. But also at the same time, they're saying, yeah, we thought we were going to be all into Oakland. We're rooted in Oakland is the thing that they always would say. But we're also doing what they call a parallel pass with Las Vegas. And so that turned the fans off completely. Then going into the 22 season, they traded everyone right after the lockout. Chapman gone, Olsen gone, Bassett, Manaya, And then they almost pretty much doubled season ticket prices. So you have a team that is pretty much decimated. So you mentioned Major League. It's just like that. Team is decimated. It's really it's just a systematic trying to, to get rid of all of the Oakland fans. They've done a great job. And now you have this Vegas thing where it seems like it, it could happen as soon as this week, maybe, if they can get this through the legislature. But we don't know that yet. This ownership has been so, I guess, incompetent with all of these times trying to move to a new stadium that you can't really just look at it and say, oh, yeah, Vegas is definitely 100 percent happening. What do we know about the owner? Well, he's the heir of the Gap fortune. We know that. Uh, he's very reclusive. He actually, there were photos of him yesterday with President Dave Cavill uh, lobbying politicians in Nevada. That's the first time we've seen him in months, if not over a year. We used to see him behind the plate sometimes at the Coliseum. We haven't seen him at all. He won't show his face there now for, for good reason. Uh, we know that he doesn't really spend on players. He also owns the Earthquakes. They have a new stadium in San Jose. They're in the bottom half of the MLS and spending still. So this idea that if they get a new stadium, the A's are going to be a big market team, questionable. But we don't really know much beyond that. He doesn't talk to the media ever. Well, if he doesn't like being around people, he should go to an Oakland A's game. Then uh, <laughs> he'd be, be all alone there. Why does Vegas want the A's? I think there's a few reasons why. I'm not really sure how much the populace wants the A's, but Vegas is a big union town, and the unions are fully behind building a stadium and the possible jobs that can come from the construction and then the workers inside the stadium, the concession workers. And Las Vegas seems hell-bent kind of on being a big league town. And they, they're they one of the towns, I think, this is why the A's have, gone, have been drawn to them. They're one of the towns that said, we want this kind of stuff here. And we will actually consider at least, you know, bumping some tax districts to this, raising taxes for that. Uh, that maybe they're a little bit reticent because of how much money they gave the Raiders. But I think that they're a little bit more willing than Oakland, which was in talks with the A's to build just a ridiculous complex, what they call Howard Terminal, right in the water. But there's a lot of hoops to jump through in California when you're building stadiums in Vegas, maybe a little bit a little bit easier. Also, Ballycorp is underwriting kind of this project. They they entered into a binding agreement, which wasn't binding because they got out of it <laughs> over at the Wild Wild West Casino. And then they went over to the Tropicana and Bally owns that property. And then Bally said that they're going to pretty much be all intertwined with the A's, with hotels and gaming and all these other things. And I think Vegas is probably pretty friendly to these casino interests. What are home games like for the Oakland A's? Well, it's it's pretty desolate nowadays. Uh, I think the people that are there right now uh, are going because of, well, they, they just, they love the A's, the few people that go there. And the also to show off right now their dislike for current ownership. I mean, the amount of signs, someone counted them up the other day, a few days ago, there were like 30 different signs saying sell, you know, cavil, weasel, you know, all these, you know, <laughs> Vegas beware, all, all these different signs in the outfield. Which actually, I'm surprised that they're allowing that to hang there. And, you know, but yeah, you're talking like 2000 people on a weekday, usually, uh, maybe a little bit more on a weekend. Uh, there are possums uh, running around in the press box area, uh, <laughs> feral cats. So it, it's a scene, you know. I mean, they have not kept up the stadium for quite some time. And so, yeah, it's it's pretty dismal there. 
Could you imagine if Kyler Murray had signed with the Oakland A's instead of gone to play football? Oh my goodness. Right now, yeah, Kyler would uh well that that was one of the things that the A's have kind of looked at A's fans is, you know, what if, because th- those teams after he got drafted were so talented and stocked with guys and they would make it to the playoffs and just fall short. So Kyler was t- sort of a shot in the dark. Uh, Keith Law, who does prospects for us, the athletic, he he still thinks that that was at least one worth taking because he was so athletic and tooled. But I think what you're getting at, if he was there and looked around the clubhouse <laughs> and looked around the field and looked around the stands, he'd be out of there immediately. He'd be, he'd be like requesting a trade, like dur- during it at bat, he would like yell out, trade me. Yeah. You know, no, he would say, I'm going to have my uh, pro day because I, I want to be drafted. I want to, I want to play in the NFL. Exactly. Uh, he'd definitely be playing video games for sure. Uh, what's the soonest, what's the timeline that the A's can move? Well, if this all goes down and the governor is trying to get this going so that it it gets approved on the last day of the legislative session, which would be Monday, if it doesn't, he might call a special session. If if it does get approved this year, then the earliest they say would be 2027 for a retractable roof mining stadium. So yeah, who knows what happens then? Do they do they possibly stay in Oakland? Do they move to Sacramento? Do they move to their AAA ballpark in Las Vegas? No one knows. Oh my goodness! I know that you uh, cover the Warriors as well. Uh, it, you know, the off season. It, is there going to be change in the off season aside from a new GM? I would imagine so. I mean, if you looked at that press conference, and I think it told you a lot about maybe why Bob Myers is stepping down. I think owners, an owner like Joe Lacob is what every fan wants, right? But he can also be exhausting. I think Bob Myers was at a point where he'd been there 11, 12 seasons. What else could he really achieve? He already was on top of the mountain in terms of perception. He can get a job anywhere, not just with an NBA team, maybe like a corporation like Disney. And and Lacob seemed to be a little bit exhausting during the press conference. He, he said to, to Bob, I don't know if he was really joking, well, you're under contract till June 30th, so you will work until June 30th. <laughs> and the look on Meyer's face was like, uh, dude, are you serious? Or really, is that, I, I'm, t- I'm telling everyone I'm gone. I think, though, that he also said, I don't care about the CBA, which will be very punitive on higher money teams. We're going to win anyways, regardless of the rules. How are they going to do that? I don't know. Does that mean you, you're trading guys like Poole and or Kaminga to try to get someone who better fits their system? I don't know. You also have a coach who's on the last year of his contract, which is pretty rare. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces. Does Draymond opt in? Does he re-sign or does he leave? I don't think that you're going to see the same team, though, next year just because of how dysfunctional things seem to be at the end of this past season. Yeah, I wonder if Steve Kerr, this is it. I don't know if he was going to hold on to go out when Steph went out, but, I mean, he's already established a Hall of Fame uh, resume here, and I I don't know – can you keep doing this? Can you keep reinventing? He's got Draymond there. Is that a good thing? You know, Clay's in, I think, his last year. Steph, at his age, um, you know, it might be. I'm, I'm, I got one more year, and I can go back to broadcasting if I wanted to. Yeah, I, he does love to coach, though. And I think he got a taste of management in Phoenix and didn't like it. Yeah. Didn't go as well as he thought it would. I think broadcasting is always an option. It's always an option for every coach to keep your name out there, keep your face out there. I, I can see that him taking a gap year and doing something like that, but the guy really does love to coach. I also don't see him as a guy who would bounce around and be on that coaching carousel, Mm-mm. go to Detroit, go to Orlando, go to New York, go to Chicago. I think that he wants the perfect situation. It's been that way, as you mentioned with Steph, but a lot of people around here kind of thought that even though all the tea leaves are saying Bob Myers is going to leave since he was so noncommittal, people still thought they were optimistic that he would stay because why would you leave Steph at this point now with a new president of operations coming in at some point, possibly Mike Dunleavy Jr., possibly one of the Lacob sons, Kirk Lacob, you know, does Kerr look around and say, all right, you know, Bob's out. Maybe this is not something I really want to undertake either. He also said Draymond Green, without him, we're not a championship contender. If Draymond does go somewhere else, where does Kerr see himself? Good stuff, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, any sign. Thank you. That's uh, Steve Berman, a baseball writer, editor for The Athletic in the Bay Area there.